round one underway. This one's scheduled for 10 in the welterweight division. Mentioned Curiel, the 2016 Mexican Olympian. A lot of high hopes for Curiel coming out of the amateurs, obviously, but just 13 and 0 right now. And Gabe, you know, he wouldn't say it to us. He wouldn't say that he was frustrated by how his career had moved. He didn't say he wanted to be moved faster, but you definitely get the sense he wants to be more active here in 2024. Yeah, absolutely. He just had one fight last year. That's all. But you know, he's a guy that stays in the gym. I know. Raul, personally, for about four years now, he's always in the gym, always working. Elias Diaz, 12 and 1, coming into this fight. Just one loss on his record. Has a degree from San Diego State University, a double major in economics, and works full time as an auditor and an accountant. Raul Curiel. He has a law degree, so I mean, we always talk about ring IQ. This may be the highest overall IQ fight in boxing history, not involving Bobby Chez, a lawyer versus an accountant in our opener. Yeah, you know, and, and the accountant Diaz, you know, that's his full-time job. So I told him, you know, how serious do you take the sport of boxing? You know, is this primary? He said, yeah, you know, his goal is to be a champion. Diaz, as we mentioned, comes from a boxing family. We mentioned trained by his father, Gregorio, but his entire family, they're all fighters, including his aunt, who he said might be the most talented in the family, but he feels that that lifetime of boxing expertise, boxing training, it's all going to culminate with his career, that he's the beneficiary of all that knowledge. So Diaz looking for right hand to the body there. Curiel's landed a couple of sneaky check left hooks so far here in the opening round as we are now inside the opening minute. It's a good one-two right there by Raul. And Diaz is trying to stay busy with the jab. Landed a good shot. Raul countered with a left hook right there. It's the back box. Big shot now inside the final 20 seconds of round one. What it seems like Raul's trying to do is Diaz, his shots are a bit wide, and Raul's trying, throwing shots straight down the middle, trying to catch Diaz as he's wide with his shots. Another good left hook there from Curiel. That's been the money shot for Curiel in the opening round. Round two begins. Raul Curiel and Elias Diaz in our opening contest. Of course, still to come, our main event, Virgil Ortiz Jr. and Frederick Lawson. Freddie was asking, was, was telling Raul, I want more combinations. Put the one and two and the three together. Well, with more on Raul Curiel, let's send it over to Beto Duran. And Corey, you touched on Curiel, a new father. He said that's the motivation. Baby was born in November. Right. His wife it's lives in clean. Arizona. Watch your shoulder he coming he in. Flew Watch to your Arizona, shoulder. Del helped deliver the baby, cut the cord, and jumped right back in. Hasn't seen the baby since the day she was born. And his wife is in attendance today. Right. This is the first time he's seen his wife since the baby was born. Why? He said because the dedication is what's needed to get to the championship level. He said a couple years ago, I wasn't mature enough to do that. I probably would have called off the fight. But his wife, who was an Olympic qualifying fencer for Team Mexico, said, no, you need to fight because you need to feed us now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Beto. And, you know, that puts into perspective, too, for Curiel, just how eager he is to get the momentum going in his career. Freddie Roach told us, I told Raul, you could go for a week, go see the baby. He said, no, I'll take one day. I'll be right back. Yeah, he said, I'll take one day because his attitude is, I got to make sure I'm on my, the top of my game so I can feed my family. <laughs> I can hear the corner of Diaz asking for more feints. See some blood coming from the mouth of Elias Diaz, I believe. You know, Diaz is, he's boxing well. Good jab, putting his punches together. I think it's time for Raul to start digging down to the body. Maybe slow his opponent down with some body shots. 
Yeah, as you would expect out of a man who uh, works with numbers all day, Diaz nice. really out, describes back, himself back, as back, a very technical fighter. Back. When you ask him what he's step good back. at, he says, like, I Not stick to the basics. I'm good at the basics. I don't want to make mistakes in there. So far, Curiel has found a few like that one. As Diaz brings that left hand back low and gets cracked with a sweeping right hand. Nice strong jab by both fighters. <laughs> and you know, Diaz, he's jabbing, but he's creating movement at the same time. So he's not let giving Raul a, a clean push target. Push him, don't push. As he jabs, he's he's bobbing and weaving. And that's <laughs> Solid jab there at the end of the combination from Diaz. Some good work from Diaz in the latter half of this round. Good technical battle here in our opener. Round three begins. See if Elias Diaz could build upon some of the good work he was producing at the end of round two. Now just going to the inside, digging to the body with the right hand. Triple jab there from Elias Diaz, and that's something that he's done well throughout his career the game. You mentioned in the last round, Diaz creating movement off of his jab, but one thing he's always done well is varying his offense with that lead hand. You don't always know whether a jab or a hook is coming at you. Yeah, absolutely. He just hit that way, doubles the jab, and then he, he hooks off the jab. I think what Raul needs to start doing is throwing in between Diaz shots. Freddie was I'm asking out, him out. in the corner for an overhand right. I think it's because Diaz is jabbing with his hand low, with his lead hand low, and what Freddie wants is for him to count over the top with overhand right. That's something that Freddie told us in fighter meetings as well, that that overhand right would be a key for Curiel in this one. And it's probably because of what we're talking about. At some point, Diaz is going to make a mistake with that left hand that he's so focused on using all the time. Absolutely. Diaz missing over the top with that right hand. Curiel steps back and counters well. Go, let him go. Don't push him, don't push him. Don't push him. But you can see a little wince from Diaz as the fighters came together there. He certainly felt that one. And that's a good body shot. That's what you want to do if you're Raul. You want to slow go, Diaz go. down. It's a lot of movement that he's, that he's doing. You want to slow him down with those body shots. Chopping right hand there from Curiel. Nice counter. Good, good shot to the body. That's a beautiful left Raul. hook up top. Beautiful left hook to the body. Curiel finding momentum here in the third round. Hard uppercut right through the middle. Break, break. Oh, your punches up. Seems like Raul is starting to warm up now. Well, those uppercuts have always been the money punch for Curiel. He has said that in the, the early education from his father in boxing, he told him, look for those uppercuts, work through the middle, and it sets up shots. Round four underway. We'll see if Raul Curiel will pounce on Elias Diaz here in the fourth. Diaz visibly hurt at the end of the third. It was an uppercut and a flush right hand immediately behind it. Seemed to have Diaz in some trouble. Hey, keep those punches up. Keep them up. That's a great jab by Raul. Nice strong jab. Freddie Roach, between rounds, was telling Curiel to go back to the well. Look for more uppercuts, follow it up with the right hand. It's exactly the combination he threw at the end of the third. He wants him to go back to that. See if potentially he can get Diaz out of here early. 
right. take a look at the CompuBox stats from round three. Curiel landing at a 44% clip. And Gabe, when you see numbers in the 40s, that means you had a dominant round. Absolutely. And, he's, and it seems that right. Diaz is cut step over back. the left side. Back clean. Step back. Box. You see the blood streaming down the face of Elias Diaz. Big sweeping left hook there for Curiel. And there's a right hand that splattered that blood that you're talking about all over the ring. And I think what's getting the momentum going for Raul now was the body shots that he landed in the third round. He landed some good body shots. It did some damage and is slowing Diaz down. You see that blood just streaming everywhere down the face of Elias Diaz right now. Pushed, I'm pushing. The jab of Curiel a moment ago just peppering right on top of where that cut is. Yeah. Hard right hand again there from Curiel. Curiel looking for his ninth consecutive knockout victory. Of course, scored a last-second, tenth-round knockout over Courtney Pennington last time out. A little bit of a bizarre stoppage, quite frankly, but he's looking for a, a genuine knockout win here tonight. You know, I like what Raul is doing, Corey. He's walking his man down, and he's picking his shots wisely, throwing hard shots at the right time. Just, you know, he... Right. Raul clean, is a guy that he, he likes activity, but he's picking smart shots, as you see right there. Hook, right hand. Yeah, that was that uppercut right hand combination that Freddie Roach was calling for. That was the uppercut with the left hand. It's all working right now. And certainly panic time for a Round five gets underway. You heard the corner of Raul Curiel telling him, you're breaking him down. And he is dragging Elias Diaz into the kind of fight that Elias Diaz said he liked when he was an amateur. He wanted to be an action fighter, but his father always told him, be defensive-minded. I don't want you getting hurt like that. It's out of his hands right now, Gabe. He's getting dragged into this. He's in a fight. He's in a fight. So at this point, the jabbing, yeah, that's good. But you got to start digging down now. And I think what he what he has to do is try to slow Raul down with some body shots. The blood's certainly an issue for Diaz. I think swelling might be an even bigger issue right now. When you look at that eye, it's starting to narrow. And Corey, you can see the difference in body language by both fighters where Diaz looks, you know, he looks intense right now. And, and, and Raul is just calm and poised attacking. And that eye is looking horrific on the face of Elias Diaz right now. You just saw him a moment ago just blink. Basically, a, a tear of blood, a stream of blood as he blinked. And I don't know how much, if anything, Diaz could see out of that eye right now. No, it's definitely blocking his vision. And Raul's approach is just landing smart shots, picking, picking his shots. There you go, strong jab, walking his man down, cutting the ring off. Strong jabs on the outside, hard uppercuts on the inside. With more on Curiel, let's send it back over to Beto. Yeah, the corner of Diaz is uh, really concerned about how Curiel is throwing the uppercuts. They're telling him to move away. They needed him to box and to stop getting tagged by the uppercuts. But Corey, that cut isn't really bothering him. It's the closing of the eye is what he was complaining to the corner. Our body shot there from Curiel right along the belt line. Grab him by the neck. Let's go. You'd have to think, Gabe, with vision issues obviously plaguing Diaz right now, those body shots are going to become available as well because he's probably just going to start shelling up. He doesn't know what's coming. It sure is. And, and the thing is, the cut is on the lead eye. So I don't think don't the distance is going to benefit him, him. I think what he needs to do is stay in the inside and get a feel for Raul and throw shots from the inside rather than try to box. And of course, the issue is that's also where Curiel is most dangerous when he can throw those uppercuts. 15 seconds remaining here in yes. round five. And another hard body, body shot, shot there shot. from Curiel. And that eye is completely shut. Oh, there he goes. He's down. Come here, come here. 
Santos. You all right? You're good, good. Right? Hey, yeah, let's go, Max. Fight. And you know, in the situation, the cut's not the problem. It's the fact that the eye's shut. It's closed. Because the cut man did a good job. There's no blood coming down from the eye. But it's shut. But no doubt, Diaz did not see that right hand coming, the one that sent him to the canvas in round five. And Raul's walking him down with a power jab. He started the round off with some really strong jabs. Three punch combination there from Curiel as he looks for that long range uppercut. Curiel on the hunt for his ninth consecutive knockout. And look at those numbers, the power punches from Raul Curiel landing at a 54% clip. Over half of his power shots are landing right now, according to CompuBox. Big Man, left big for left Curiel. Diaz in a lot of trouble right now, and that is a recurring theme at this point. He is dealing with a lot. The eye and an extremely talented opponent in front of him in Raul Curiel, a guy who Freddie Roach said he felt was ready for some of the top fighters at 147 last year. So Curiel looking to send a message here in our opening contest. Right here, Curiel's on. He's, he, he's hunting him down, and Diaz is fighting like survival mode. I'm out. Nice right up with by Raul. Just a beautiful shot. Uppercut connects Man. again. Curiel going back to it. See, Diaz thinks that the overhand right's coming, and Raul switches it up and gives him the uppercut. Curiel trying to step in with that left hook again. Right here, Raul should just keep the jab going. Just keep pumping that jab so something big comes through. Hey, let him out, let him out, let him go. Step back. Yeah, I think Box. thought about a body shot there. Final 10 seconds of this round. Diaz has managed to slow the pace a little bit. But you're right, Gabe. This is survival mode at the moment for Elias Diaz. So round seven begins, and you might have heard the ominous warning from the official telling Elias Diaz, hey, you got to show me something. Diaz just didn't seem to have any offensive ideas, Gabe, that he felt comfortable with in that last round. And understandably, when you're dealing with those vision issues, I don't know that anything feels safe to throw. You don't know what's coming back at you. Yeah, and that's why I feel that him moving him moving in boxing and creating distance is not it's not helpful. You know, when, you got, when you're blind, the best thing you could do is just get close and, and, and feel your opponent and throw shots in between. All right, let's send it back over to Beto Duran. Beto. A concern in Diaz's corner. They told me if he doesn't throw enough this round, they will stop it. Big left hook there from Curiel. Step back, Clean. Let him out. Step back. Box. You're right, Gabe. I think most of the time in this scenario, when you have a fighter with one eye that's closing, you do see them go to the inside. Once in a while, you know, you'll see an Algeri Provodnikov yeah. scenario where a guy with one eye can box his way to victory, but right now that just doesn't seem to be an option for Diaz. Yeah, you have to make adjustments. You know, things change in, in, in a fight. And when things change, you have to have the ability to make the adjustment. And the thing is that Diaz is still fighting the same way. Hey, hey, hey. He's not showing Raul anything different. Do not push different. him down like that, okay? Do not. <laughs> Stiff jab there from Curiel, snaps the head back of Diaz. Listen, this is a gutsy effort from Diaz. Maybe, you know, there's something else, game that he could be doing. But again, to put this in perspective, let's go. Let's go. he's fighting one of the best up-and-coming 147-pounders on the planet with one eye. 
Yeah, and he's trying, you know, he's boxing. Push, he's throwing push, his jab, push. but he doesn't have no pop in the shot. And he's not doing anything that Raul is able to, you know, keep Raul honest. Clubbing right hand there from Curiel. Sends Diaz back to the ropes. Diaz trying to fire that overhand right, but he gets clipped with one of his own. Watch, watch your arm. Nice body shot by Raul. Arm right hand at the end of that combination. Again, right on that eye. Final 10 seconds of round seven, and there will be some critical decisions to be made in the corner of Elias Diaz, his father, Gregorio. I can just tell by his body language that he's on survival mode. You know, there's one thing when a fighter's cut, but he's fighting, and, he's, and, and he looks like he's trying to win. <laughs> All right, well, Beto Duran was over in the corners during the break. Beto, what do you have? Freddie Roach told him he's done. Go get him. He used two hands. He's done, Raul. And I asked Freddie, how much longer? He said, this round. Okay, well, calling their shot. Are Freddie Roach and Raul Curiel. And that's what Raul needs to do. Double up the shots. He doubled up the left hook right there. When he throws the one two, double up the right hand. those numbers 54 percent of the power shots from Raul Curiel landing right now basically gave every other